show too many cards as now it is the drafting phase here on your screen between Bigatron and Evos for match number three, game number one. Oof. We can see that the Fanny and the Valentina is already banned out. So usually when the Valentina is banned out, the Faramis will follow soon after. Otherwise, the only team, you know, the, the first paid team will get a huge advantage. The Ling is instantly banned out. So this hero, we haven't seen a lot of it at all. And a lot of people think it's not really that strong in, you know, solo, in ranked. But when you're with a, with a pro team, when you're at the mechanical skill level of these pro players, that is a completely different ball game. So Ling is still very much respected in the MPL right now. I'm getting flashbacks to Season 9. Remember the first time Bigatron met EVO's Legends, BTR were able to win. How? By banning five of Fair Six heroes. Oh. Here, they've already gone for the Fanny and the Ling, two of Fair Six signature picks. And EVO's Legends, they're going with the normal route. Let's just respect the prior heroes. Valentina, Faramis may be coming out next. There Your you go. And possibly, <laughs> they got the 1-1. <laughs> they have Clover. To live you know, arguably the best 1-1 one -one player in MPL ID. Let it go. Let's let's duke it out for it. We haven't seen Matt on the one one for a long time, and he hasn't found success in the times that he he did pick that hero. Yep. Okay. But when he was on the Beatrix, he has been able to actually get absolute value on those marksmen. But we have a comment from BTR Stylist from Big Alpha. This match is proof that whoever wins has the strongest mentality. Woo. Okay. Spicy. I like that from Stylist. You know, uh, he's been building this team up with his new coaching style, with his new vision and identity for the team. And so far, it has worked, right? Mm -hmm. The mentality is mostly to do with that. I can see the confidence already from the players that maybe wasn't present as much in Season 9. You can see, though, for the bands, it's exactly as predicted, Arashi. Three bands towards Ferrisik, the Akai that we've seen in the jungle 90% of the time in Season 10, Ling and Fanny. Yeah, but this is also starting to limit Max's hero pool as well. So this may be a double-edged sword, but once again, time will tell. Evo's Legends with the last ban. Will it be 1-1? One -one? Will it be other priority heroes? I mean, Julian is still on the table. So is Karina, as well as that Eve. But it actually is going to be the 1-1. One -one. They don't want to risk that falling into the hands of BTR, even though, like Miracle mentioned, we have not yet seen a successful attempt on Matt, 4-1-1. Some, one, one. Something's up, something's up. What Natalia, is it? Natalia, Natalia wasn't banned out here. Bigatron Alpha might pick it up. Key is known to play Natalia. Will he go for it, Arashi? Well, we saw it being put to absolutely amazing use in the previous game. Among so the we'll have to see. Exists. First pick for the side of Bigatron. Will be the Yeep. This is more in style for. with what we've come to expect, right? The, you know, the normal front to back, flexible picks from the side of Bigatron. If they secure a good mid lane, they can transition that into a strong side lane as well, or a very aggressive jungle maneuver, invading yeah. towards the opposing team's jungle. So we have to see what is the response from the side of Evo's Legends. Yeah, Moreno also really likes his hero. And as of right now, I know it's only been one match, but he is still sitting at a 100% win rate on that hero. So now from the side of Evo's Legends, the floor is on their hands right now. What can they be picking up here? There is still a lot of heroes on the board. How do we feel about More Julian right now? Oh, okay. and Julian it is. Perfect, exactly. Uh, I was about to transition that to my next point. Pick a hero for Fairsick. Don't let it go to the second phase because as you can see, that's what Bigatron are trying to go for. Banning Fairsick out. This man coming out of the MDL to the MPL basically had such a big impact. Evos won in the season that he joined. Season 7. As a rookie, replacing a legend in the team, one. Yep. The fact that he was able to rise Time to the occasion and Nothing get a win streak with Evo's Legends all the way to becoming the champions, that shows how good, how much potential Ferrisic truly has in MPL. But on the side of BTR, they're going for the same strategy we saw yesterday, Arashi. Yib, Beatrix, and they pick up an Esmeralda. But they're up against Amasha. Exactly. Even Beatrix, man. So they're going for the very strong backline presence. But now with a Masha and a Julian, there is a lot of potential for Evo's Legends to orchestrate a dive, right, towards the backline. And unlike with Onik, they do not have the Akai for that protection. So they have to try and find a different solution. And for Evo's right now, they can take one more here to try and make that happen. That will be the claw. That is even more dive. 
something needs to be picked up by Bigatron to try and deal with this man. Man, full dive comp here from the side of EVO's Legends. If they want to sustain in that sort of gameplay, take out CCs, right? Atlas was chosen by Key yesterday. We saw the effect as well as a Lolita. That could definitely be an option for them to ban out here as we enter the second phase of the ban and picks. Disengage, that's ex that's what BTR needs right now. They already have a solid frontliner in the Esmeralda. And this is what you mentioned, Eterna. The bans toward the jungle, focusing on the jungle, could be a double-edged sword. The Akai could have been a perfect pick for BTR to just nullify that Masha dive with the Julian as well. But now that it's banned, My Pikachu pleasure. will need to look for something Your else. Team Meanwhile, Evo's Legends, as you can see there, we had a comment from Bajan Arashi Bajan. talking about Starless. He said that in the Starless era, BTR seems to play more disciplined. Absolutely, and we have seen that. It looks that way so far, but it has only been one game, right? One match. So we'll just have to see how they fare up against the other teams because we discussed this a bit earlier, but we have agreed that matchups may, uh, styles make the matchups, right? So maybe Bigatron have to change something and play a bit differently. They ban out the Atlas knowing that Evos will need a very, very solid engage tool, right? Without proper engage, there's nothing to set up the Julian, the Masha, as well as the Claude for those big plays, for the big bursts of damage. This is interesting because I would have thought that Atlas would have been a great addition to their own team. But they've actually opted to ban it out themselves. So when we're talking about disengage, what kind of heroes come to mind? Ooh, it'll depend on which role they want to put these, uh, the heroes in, right? So, I don't know, they have already a lot of crowd control, essentially, from Eve, but someone beefy, someone with a lot of AoE stun. The Kufra can be an option, but it feels like maybe it's not ideal in the punch current situation. For a punch. Your team Ruby? is banning. Ruby, Diggy, those are the two heroes that instantly come up when you say disengage. Akai as well, but we can't say it because it's been banned. The Atlas as well has been banned by BTR. Aside from Diggy, um, aside from Ruby, what other hero can they go for here? Single target, basically. I don't know, Lolita? Technically, the, cho the Lolita is pretty good in the disengage, but... It's very gimmicky. You need to be very, very precise with your Numenon Blast. You need to time it well as well so that you don't get hit by any of the CC while you're channeling it. Here, you can see the Julian can pop up that Enhanced Chain just instantly there as we're going to take a look at what White Chicken has to say. He actually talk? thinks that your Evos will win this. So he's on your side, Arashi, because uh -huh. this team made me see MPL ID. So, White Chicken all the way from North America. The first time he heard about MPL ID was through EVOS. Exactly, you can't deny the impact EVOS has had World champions. in the EVO in the esports scene, essentially, especially for Mobile Legends, right? So, the Natalia will be banned from Bigatron. That is what they are assuming EVOS might go for. That is an option, right? If you can't go for the big engages, go for a hero that can really wreak havoc in the back line. So Natalia will be denied from EVOS, but they are still lacking a bit of crowd control, a bit of engage. And if they don't have it, it might be a bit too risky. Franco is actually still open, but with how they've been they've been uh, picking, they've been drafting, it doesn't sound like it's... Your oh, actually, well, I was picking. about to say, it doesn't look like it's going to make a lot of sense, but they go for it. It looks good on the side of EVO's Legends. I would agree that it doesn't look good for BTR because what they need to go for is... Peel. But you can see the crowd already going crazy for that Franco pick by Bajan. Again, one of his picks that, you know, Bajan, he's a, he's a pure tank player. He likes playing on these engage heavy tanks. Going for the Franco is definitely a difference here from what he usually plays in the MDL. But I want to I wanna highlight Pendragon. Because in the MDL, he had a stellar performance in the Grand Finals against Alter Ego X on this hero. His Masha was constantly 1v4, 1v5. But Eterna, your prediction was correct. The Lolita comes out and the Bowman in the jungle to secure objectives. Three frontliners to try to soak in as much damage from this dive comp that Evos have selected for themselves. Oof, they're looking really beefy right now from the side of Bigatron. Now, does Evos Legends with Claude, Julian, and Masha, do they have enough damage? Another question is where this Julian will actually be placed. Because yes. is it going to be a jungle Julian or a mid Julian? Because if not, they have yet to secure a mid laner here for Krite. So far, we've only seen Krite use those heroes like the Yeev, like the Sicilian. So if he does pick up the Julian, this is going to be a new shade for him. Exactly. Now we see Donkey in the back just showing support right here with the rest of the enemy. I wonder who he's rooting for. 
I wonder. It's actually. not like he was an ex Evos player or anything. <laughs> but uh, let's take a look Ooh. at the final pick. It's Evos going for the Lilia on the hands of Kryte. Another one of his favorite picks here in the MPL. Let's talk about Kryte. Kryte, the new team captain of Evos Legends. And in my opinion, the man who really shined in Season 9. Yeah. He has for sure had a lot of roles. Leading a team that is essentially new with not much synergy, of course, there's a lot of weight on his shoulders. But speaking of the team compositions, though, they are severely outranged. But they do have the option of using that Masha to completely zone away the Beatrix and the Yeev. So that is still in their playbook. But Bikachuan can still adapt to that and see if they can maybe, you know, use their crowd control and shut that kind of ideas down. And of course, if Evos doesn't get ahead in the early game, that Masha won't be nearly tanky enough. Oh, okay. Unanimous wow. 18 minutes. We'll see if that comes true or not here we didn't sync this up by the way one. guys this is yeah, yeah i didn't even take a look at your prediction me neither yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, 18 minute game well i guess we, we all know when it comes to bigachon they always take the game long win or lose it's always a long game because of how slow the tempo is in their games but ladies and gentlemen here it is both of the drafts wrapped up arashi quick predictions we know that you think evos will win the series but based on the draft for game one I think Evo is going to take it, man. I think they have what it takes, and they have the options to play around with when necessary. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, Eterna. Bix is there. He's staring you down. Hi, Bix. You go for BTR or Evo? What, what do you think, Bix? What do you think, Bix? What? It's all about timing? Oh, okay. It's, it's all about timing, guys. Whoever dishes out the one. damage first will have not the upper hand, but be able to become backed. If wow. that makes sense. Ladies Yo. and gentlemen, Eterna making a new word here on the English desk. <laughs> Comebackable is the term. But ladies and gentlemen, we're jumping straight in to this derby. It's Evos taking on Bigatron Alpha in the land of Dawn. Matt up top in the gold lane, already just farming. Doesn't really want to go for any aggressive trades because Bajan is here to come and play. Oh, almost connecting. Almost connects here. And what I what I meant by timing was the fact that whoever goes in aggressively first and pops the ultimates first might be able to get, you know, cancelled. And I mean this by because if let's say Evo's Legends wants to go for a really offensive strike first, Bigatron Alpha has the tools in their kit to be able to cancel that because they have the Numenon Blast coming in from Key. They also have a lot of options with Matt as well on the Beatrix as well as that real world manipulation coming in from Moreno. But on the flip side, even if they do want to pop up these ultimates first, Evo's Legends also has the option to just wait until those cooldowns are popped and then they can go in with Clover towards that back line with, of course, the Blazing Duet. They have control over the turtle area right now. And again, they do have a lot of combos. After Franco Hook lands onto Max, he is able to escape though. And he, now, Evo's Legends, they have control and they have threat onto the members of Pikachu Alpha. It's all about setup. Falling Star went on to Doom Wembers and Cerizo jumps in. Max on to that turtle. That's the Doom Man Blast already popped and used by Key. They're going to go for the secure here. That's the Retribution and the Lethal Counter over to BTR. Fair Stick zoned away from his own purple buff as both teams disengage. This is the BTR that we saw yesterday. Take objective, leave, avoid fights. Already very disciplined, already very objective centered, and now they're leading with 800 gold here in the first three minutes. How will Evo's Legends respond to this, understanding that they're relying heavily on these pickoff setups? Are they going to be able to punish Matt in that gold lane is definitely going to be the question. They need to approach Bigatron Alpha from multiple angles, man. If they go for one from one direction, there's going to be a lot of falling stars moves, Lumen on Blasts, as well as the real manipulation to try and zone everyone away from that front line. But if they come from multiple angles, Bigatron Alpha is forced to divide the crowd control into multiple areas, multiple sectors, and that is where Evo's Legends can claim, can get some value from the play. So, basically what you're trying to say, Arashi, is Evo's Legends needs to force fights, but they need to make it messy. Exactly. But for Bigatron Alpha, what they need to do is use that disengage properly, use the range advantage they have to get the poke and in the end, try to look for these very, very compact and organized team fights. Exactly. They have to kite back away from the oh. danger. Aggressive now gets focused on, but he gets out. 
good sidestep bidding Max in for the hook to come through. Page of his bloody hunt, able to lock him down as Clover picks up the kill. First blood by Samsung Galaxy A series picked up from Evo's Legends. So trades are happening all over the board. Bigatron Alpha was very aggressive in the first two, first two minutes, but now Evo's Legends they're starting to come back and starting to you know show true to their first main idea. As now so Rizo mm -hmm. is going to get a little punished here by Fursec as well as Pendragon. Oh my God, the crowd is going wild. He here with a stun onto Clover. Matt trying to follow up with the Wesker damage. Used his ultimate there, but the damage and the uh, channel wasn't fast enough. Clover is still able to get out with a battle mirror image as they try to look for a collapse up top. It's all just a setup. Again, look at the smart movements from BTR. They move around top side. So Rizzo recalls from the bottom side, not even clearing his lane just to get more pressure here as Cry is forced to use the black tube. It's another free turtle from to the side of BTR. Oof, Matt almost gets taken out. But this is the issue, right? When they just fight for control, when Evo's Legends fights for control against Bigatron Alpha, Bigatron has a lot more zoning tools available. But if Evo's Legends, if they pull the trigger and go for the fight first and then the objective afterwards, I think that is the approach they can take. We saw that Rebellion Zyra was able to do something similar against Bigatron Alpha in the previous day's match. So if they can execute that game plan, but better, that will be a very significant key to victory for Evo's Legends. Yeah, that's definitely something they do need to keep in mind as you can see here on screen that EVO's Legends, they're starting to rotate towards that top side. They are and trying to pressure Matt here, but we'll see as there is a huge response coming in from the other members of Bigger Sun Alpha. No, not Black predicted with a flicker there. It's going to be Bajan taken down, but look at it, has Jane able to peel for a little bit longer. He taken down. Real world manipulation all around. Right, trying to dish out the damage as that's the Black Shoes cop to disengage. A one for one. Both roamers going down. Remember that EVO's Legends, they brought three sprints so even if the Numenon Blast sorry even if the or the Numenon Blast or even the real world manipulation gets popped off they do have the tools to be able to maneuver around these really really heavy ultimates happening and we can see that a little bit happening so Vigatron Alpha they also need to be aware of these spells when they're popped up when the cooldowns are on as well well the question is who will actually get the upper hand along with the Right, for the set Bigger than Alpha, a proper two side composition is good, but for the set of Evo's Legends, in the late game, a single high value hook can change the course of the game. And now we take a look at the items as Krite already has a bunch of cooldown reduction built up and he can spam those spells as well as get out of sticky situations with the black shoes. And similar builds are seen from Marino as well as Torito. They want to make sure they can stay in the fight. Uh-oh, P gonna get locked down by the bloody hunt. Bigatron just getting the turret and backing up again. Very objective. One to three, but it's still BTR who's holding up on the sleed, just not letting their grasp. Mm -hmm. They're not letting go. They're not letting go at all. But yeah, I understand. Like Evo's Legends, they're still waiting for Clover to get his power spike because he is a very power spike reliant. Once he gets the, f the first two items, that will be where we see them play a bit more aggressive. But they are trying to contest the Lord as uh, the turtle right now. Turtle fight gonna happen here. So Rizzo jumping in with the falling star moon, able to immobilize both members, but fair sick. Wow! Max had the lethal counter and he was still not able to chain it properly to take it down. Evo secured a turtle, but fair sick. Oh no! He's gonna get caught into three ultimates, but Bajin pulls key back. No bloody hunt available. And that's a snipe by Matt, not connecting onto anyone. They're just looking for objectives again. Very slow tempo. It's very slow tempo, like we saw in game number one. Yesterday, when Bigatron Alpha was going against Rebellion, but it was still a worth a trade for the side of Bigatron Alpha Day as they have secured more objectives on the board. Now, the thing is, how is this going to go? Because Moreno has made a significant impact. I mean, those real world manipulations, they're able to do a lot of justice here for their team, allow, allow a lot of maneuvering as well, and really preventing Evo's Legends for, from being aggressive and overly aggressive. Right, Parasic already has the Shadow Queen Blade still. So that's a huge power spike and a golden trap as well. But that's right. Quick is taken out, but the hook lands onto Moreno. Uh-oh, do not blast though. Perfectly timed. Parasic gonna be able to get out as Clover jumps in. Look at the damage in the blazing duet in the back line there, but BTR able to disengage and they're happy with the 2,000 gold lead off of that poke damage. Man, this is very interesting. This is very interesting. The counter engage coming in from Bigatron Alpha is exceptional to see as now we're going to take a look at the fun fact here by Graz and as it turns out in MPL ID Season 9, Max was 
is notoriously known for his assassin picks, and the fact that he picked up the Bauman today is actually his first time. So this is the debut Bauman on Max. He's doing, it, he's doing really well on that Bauman as well. So for set of Evo's Legends, they have to shape up and try and make sure that their movements have, uh, have a wow. point to them, right? Because Big Edge and Alpha, it seems like whenever they get picked up, whenever they win a fight, there's always something they are aiming to get afterwards. Whereas for Evo's Legends, they just seem to be trying to get the upper hand, but they don't have a, a long-term plan in their minds. Sorizo 1 HP, is still able to get out with the help of the sprint, but Pendragon is here as well. Arashi now, the tables have turned! The hook doesn't connect onto Matt. Pendragon used the Thunderclap earlier, still has the sprint to get out. Out disengaged. Versic helps his team out from the Lord Pit. Conceal is going to be popped here. Big Edge on Alpha. Cerezo is coming back here into the Lord Pit. Evo's Legends once again on the run, trying to go for the flank. It's actually Clover jumping in. Has Bajan. Oh, he goes into Bloody Hump. He's going to be cancelled. That's Max with the lethal counter combo with Retribution to pick that team turtle. The Lord up, actually. As Cerezo finds a kill onto the Roamer. Krite forced to back away, forced to run for the hills as the sprints will be used. Bigatron again. Bigatron has just the absolute better control of the area. They just wait patiently. They make sure that they hide away from all the potential engage tools from Evo's Legends, and they are able to gain the upper hand. You know, take a look at the item. Ferrisek has a lot of damage, but he does not get the opportunity to try and use it. And that can, the same can be said about Clover. He goes in and he gets instantly chucked down, and he is not able to output the damage as reliably as he would want. What I find interesting from the itemization coming in from destroyed. Moreno is that he actually prioritized the Enchanted Talisman before the Ice Queen won. So he's prioritizing more cooldown reduction as well as mana instead of the utility that the real world manipulation can actually have. Destroyed. But as you can see here, the Numenon Blast already charging, but unfortunately misses the target as that is going to be a Lord falling down for zero? Wow. Right. They, they might actually get another turret on top side here. So Rizzo is trying to make sure that that is the case. But Big and Alpha, Red they're playing it absolutely calculated. And you have to wonder, is this the same issue that all these teams playing with Francos are facing? Right? Big and Alpha, they have been very careful to make sure that the core members have not been able to get hooked by Bajan on the Franco. Whereas whenever they even get Moreno earlier, it's instantly countered by Key with the Nominant Blast. So they have answers for every time Evo's Legends try and initiate something aggressive. This is just such... This is efficiency on a whole nother level, Arashi, Eterna. Uh -huh. Bigotron Alpha, how they're able to play the game here. It all relies on the Beatrix. Now we finally know why they keep on prioritizing that Beatrix pick with the Yeeve, right? The amount of range that the Beatrix provides on the Renner is just so, so versatile when it comes to sieging down turrets. With the help of that real-world manipulation to lock people down and just to just add that little bit of damage for the render shot to just one-shot somebody. That combination makes it really hard for Evos to even defend under their turret. 11 minutes in, and Bigatron Alpha have already gone a 6 turret lead. Yep. And so, we have an announcement here where the new, the new hero will be out. Yeah, he will be out. And he is already out at this point in time as well. And Pendragon, he has the Twilight Armor right now, so he is going to be a bit tankier. He's going to have a lot more damage. And the longer this game goes, the more there's a possibility for Pendragon to just dive in towards that back line. Oh. Unless he gets shot up. Bajan goes with a bloody hunt, flicker combo on the back line. The Clover jumps in with the battle mirror image to deal the damage onto Matt, but the win of nature was perfectly timed by Matt. A 1 for 0 right now as Moreno was taken down by that dive. Bigatron trying to clear out the waves. Lord up in 5 seconds. Very, very good translation and very good setup by Evo's Legends to set up again for the Lord. Enhanced this time. Man, I mean, Pendragon did that wonderfully well. He went straight for the back line. No care in the world for the damage that Matt could eventually place. But with that in mind, he was able to zone out and prevent the damage from ongoing on two members of his fellow Evo's Legends. And now Evo's Legends does have the upper hand here. They will be able to secure this Lord, but not if he has anything to say about this. Ooh, he pops a conceal, but it's countered, quote-unquote, by Clover with the with the, uh, the blazing duet. So that'll be early. And now Bigatron can once again contest for control in the Lord Tip. So he's still getting locked down. Killing Street picked up by Clover. The hook will not connect onto Key. That's the Luna Blast already popped the news onto one member only. Bajan, Bigatron Alpha on the run. He's taken down. Gonna be taken out by Pen
Pendragon, but no, he's still surviving. He's going to be turned around upon. Pendragon's going to go low, and Matt finishes him off with Max taking that iron hook for him. The twin buff here in the 13 minute of the game. Evos rolls a force, the Lord on Bigatron Alpha. Retribution still up for both of the junglers. Bajan trying to zone away. Max has the lethal counter to combo this together. It's going to be Matt looking for the dunk on that one. A nature pop by both. Matt and Clover, but Clover is going to get taken down. Lord taken very low. It's going to be the battle of Retribution. It's Thirsty who picks the Retribution up. Right, going to get taken down though. And that's the lethal counter. Connecting Numenon Blast will solidify that kill. Right down. Three members taken down for one Lord in return as Bigatron Alpha, even though that they lost the Lord, they were able to prevent Evo's Legends from pushing that pace even further. They are still now standing at a 3,000 gold lead, but the Lord, Enhanced Lord, mind you, is already on the way in that mid side as First Sick has already picked up that Holy Crystal. Unfortunately for Evo's Legends, they fought so hard and they sacrificed so much to get this Lord, but they can't put it to good use at all. This is what we've been talking about, right? Is it worth getting the Lord if you lose three members in the process? Right now, Bigatron with that advantage, with the control, they wrestle away the purple buff away from Fersic, and so he will be struggling to get any kind of income as Bigatron Alpha try and put a stranglehold onto Evo's Legends. Already a lot of pressure there in the top side as Sorizo rotated up there, put and was able to maneuver those waves and now Evo's Legends they are looking for a proper setup once again it is still the calm before the storm here as there is only 100 seconds left on the clock for the next Lord we'll see what happens as Moreno very intelligently has actually opted for that glowing wand so a little bit more DOT damage to be able to burst down through members like Dimasha like Franco as well as Fursic himself Let's talk a little bit about the Lord, actually, Urashi. Because yeah. Evo's Legends, they secured it. They play it really well. This is set up for it. And Bigatron Alpha, wait. Instant replay presented to you by the Samsung Galaxy A series. But there's a fight going on. That's going to be Cerezo. Hooked in. Noon on blast with a flicker. On to Bajan. Only one member. Pendragon coming in. Running to look for a pick. Ladies and gentlemen, Max going to get knocked up here by the Enhanced Chain. And he is going to fall. Immortality is going to be popped out. Max still surviving up against Berserk. Jumping around and juking these abilities out. He losing out on his immortality, but it's going to be key. Still able to run away. Meanwhile, Max, what he's trying to do is buy some time. That's about it, but he's going to fall. Evo's Legends pick that kill up. Evo's Legends, man, they're playing it so, so well. And this is what we're talking about, right? In the late game, who will get the advantage? We, did, we missed the beginning of the fight right there, but as you can see, when Evo's Legends push, you know, push the, metal, uh, the pedal to the metal and they go all the way towards the back line, Bigatron Alpha is forced to retreat, right? Unless there's an objective, unless Bigatron Alpha is uh, wrestling with control, area control from the Evo's Legends, Evo's has the advantage in these messy skirmishes. Yeah, they do. Evos needs to keep on looking for this. They need to isolate Bigatron Alpha and they need to stop Bigatron Alpha from orchestrating these organized Blue team fights. Team it's all gonna destroyed. come down to this guy right here. If Matt is actually able to hide away, play it normally, he's gonna be able to win. Look at Key! Oh. Able to dunk everyone! Two members with the Numenon Blast, stunning them up for Matt to come to play. That's exactly the right timing for Matt's highlight to come up, Arashi. Matt is the damage output from BTR. Yep. They, they make sure that it's, you know, they, they have the, their roles separated perfectly, right? They have the front line and they have the back line. So Bigatron are very clear on what each individual's job is to do in this game. Yeah, so Rizzo already once again doing his job. He needs to zone, what, four members from the side of Evo's Legends? So now Bigatron Alpha, they've secured another Lord. Will they be able to finish this push as now we are entering the 17th minute of the game? Let's take a little peek into the items. Parasic is farming up a storm, man. He's almost at full items. He has a lot of damage, but so does Matt. So it's... You know, it's faster damage, it's burst damage on Evo's Legends compared to DPS on the set of Bigatron Alpha. So if Evo's Legends can't find a proper timing to engage, as well as making sure they don't engage into a Numenon Blast, it's going to be very, very difficult. Moreno right now understands he is one of the prime targets. He has two defensive items. He has the Brutus Breastplate on top of the Winter Truncheon. So he'll be a very tough target to try and burst down for the set of Evo's Legends. 
Okay, and even other than itemization, you can see the way that he's able to position himself because he knows that Pendragon might go for him there in that back line. So he really is waiting, but look at this concealed play is going to start. Yeah, there you go. Pendragon trying to buy his team a little bit of time as he goes in for the back line. It's going to be immobilized, though, by Cerezo's Falling Star Moon. Two HP bars gone. A Lord cleared out by Evo's Legends. A good defense, but the base has cracked. There you go. Numenor Blast onto Pendragon as the lethal counter is going to be comboed in by the damage from Moreno. Real world manipulation, locking first in place and taking him down. But the enhanced sword comes into play to get out. Matt picking up the turret. Base turrets all across mid, bot, and top taken down. And BTR disengaged the discipline from Bigatron Alpha shining. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the, without the presence of Key, they want to go for too much because of that flicker combo with the Iron Hook. It was possible for them to take him out first. So once again, they are playing the discipline game. They are still ahead in 7,000 gold. And you can start to see that the respect items are coming through for Bigatron Alpha as well. Key already with the Athena Shield. Exactly. We'll take a look again at Matt. Player statistic, he is the star of the show right now. 5, 0, and 4. He is the main damage output that Evo's Legends can't get their hands on. Pandragon goes for the dive earlier, but he gets zoned away. And the damage coming in from Matt right now with the shotgun? Woo! That is some damage that even the tankiest of members can't really take. Well, honestly, Arashi, look at this. You're talking about a tanky member being targeted here, and will he be able to take the damage? Matt and Cerezo, they're looking for it here. Three HP bars. Let's see if he's able to chunk him, melt him down. It doesn't seem like they are able to, but slowly but surely, they'll be able to do it here. Bajan going for the hook, connecting onto Matt. That's a frontliner, not the target you want to go for. Meanwhile, backside, Matt charging that Renner shot, not going to let it go just yet. They're both setting up for the Lord. Clover going in with that blazing duet, surviving one way one HP. Oh. oh no, he tried to survive, he tried to stay in the stone lane, but in the end he's gonna get caught out. Red Dragon going to the back lines with Moreno with the spin, is able to maneuver himself out of that one. Pendragon going to be zoned away. Moreno low, but they have a one-man lead. They have a one-man lead and they have lost their retribution. Out of all the people that they could have lost, they lost first six. So now they have zero pressure unless people's legends, they want to take a gamble to be able to get it, but the answer is going to be no. Bigatron Alpha once again, the next Lord into their hands, and this is going to be the third Lord. Again, the importance of combos there, and even though it looked really bad for Bigatron, they got like three men, uh, three members knocked up by Karatis Julian, but in the, in the end, it's still all within their calculation because there is no real follow-up from the side of Evo's Legends. They don't go in together. Clover was in first, and then the rest of the team followed up afterwards. We take a look at the player head-to-head -head by head and shoulders between Ferrisic and Max. And on the stats, Ferrisic is always on top. But in this game, you can see that Max is having a lot better of a time. I don't know. I feel like Max is a little bit more low-key than Ferrisic, right? Very disciplined. He doesn't go for yeah. those crazy, flashy TikTok moments, let's mm -hmm. say, like Ferrisic. He doesn't go too aggressive or too risky. He just knows he has the instinct to know when to go in and when to go out. Well, that perfect timing, Aeterna. As you say that, they go in and Pendragon gets <laughs> melted, <laughs> executed by the lethal counter. Ferrisic with the enhanced able to get fine three. But Bajan goes to the back line, getting that bloody haunt onto Moreno, but it's going to be immortality only that Matt loses out on. Bajan going to fall here, actually still able to survive with the help of the conceal. They survive, they defend, and they get a one for one. But in the end, it's Cerezo picking up the kill. Still able to survive for now, but enhanced sword picks that kill up. Ferrisic trying to defend. It's a two for two. And Evo somehow have defended another Evolved Lord push. How does this keep happening for the side of Evo's Legends against all odds? Three Base lords. Turrets. Three lords. Already stacked against them. Once again, they're able to defend. What is Bigatron Alpha doing wrong, Arashi? I think they were a bit too overzealous for the end there. They did get comboed by Fersic, and there was great follow-up by Clover. This is what we've been, we've been saying. Here's the instant replay by the Samsung Galaxy A series. And look at that. This is like later on, but all the HP bars are very, very low from the side of Bigatron Alpha because they took a lot of punishment. And then afterwards, it's just people trickling in towards the base. It just wasn't enough. There wasn't enough minions there wasn't enough momentum so Bigatron they have to keep playing it calm and calculated man 
time because even this, you know, even when they're 7k gold ahead, it is 23 minutes in the game. Evo's Legends, if they can make that huge play, that huge combo, they can still come back from this. The combo wombo is going to be very important for the side of Bigatron Alpha. And in that particular team fight, we saw that Moreno popped the real world manipulation quite early. Do you think that if he held it a little bit longer, the turn of events would have ended in different results? Mm. Well, Honestly, looking at it, it just felt like Evo's Legends played it really well, yep. right? Sure, if Vigitron Alpha just went for the base, I don't think it would be possible, actually. Because considering Evo's Legends is dive, Vigitron Alpha will not have that opening to actually go straight for the base. They gotta deal with the people in front of them. And the damage from the people in front of them, the Claude, the Masha, the Julian, the Lilia, is definitely not, no joke. Yeah, so I think there's value to the there's a valid point that you cannot make about the real manipulation. But I think then using the real manipulation to try and zone the members of Evo's Legends away from the base earlier, I think that is exactly what gave Evo's Legends the opportunity, the trigger to make a play out. So first it goes in for the play onto T, not the ideal target, and it does not land either. So now Bigatron, they're playing the macro game so so well. The lanes are all pushing, and some people are getting caught out. Uh oh, Pendragon caught all alone, immobilized there by Cerezo's falling star move, but he still has three full HP bars. Gonna lose one, but it's not a threat yet for Evo's legends. Evo's. They're just gonna take a chill, go for the purple buff once again. They're gonna have to micromanage the waves coming in from the bottom side and the top lane. Will they have enough time? Will they have enough damage? He getting hooked, but there's no threat here. Actually, it is gonna be BTR who pushes this team fight because they know that Pendragon has been tasked to clear out that top side wave. BTR, again, they're gonna go for this lore. Let's see, real world blazing cast is gonna be the hook connecting as well. On the back line, so Max finishes off that turtle. Long world blazing duet finds Moreno, finds T, and that's another going in. Evo's legends turning it around. Max gets hooked, and he will be taken down by Christ. He's still able to pick her out. One more shotgun. First thing finds the Maniac. He's silencing the doubters. That's the Maniac by the Samsung Galaxy A series. With the Lord here, Cerezo can still defend for a little bit of time. Meanwhile, top side, Minions pushing in. Cerezo jumping in with Molly Simon with a bit of junction. Able to buy a little bit more time here. A lot of shielding. He's able to clear out the waves. He's able to buy the time. 30 seconds on the death timers. He's going for the Minions once again. Bay Hill the Bloody Haunt stopping him in his tracks as Evo's Legends get the base. It's wide open and Evo takes game number one. Game number 